Michael Centaurus radial engine and running in from the right, the Hawker Fury ISS. standing for Iraqi single seat because this is an ex-Iraqi Air Force Fury. like fighter, but when World War II ended, the RAF no longer had a requirement. Nonetheless, Hawker continued development of it as the Sea Fury for the fleet air arm, and it came into service in October 1945. Like a lot of new aircraft that enjoy great success in service, the Sea Fury had its troubles early on. In fact, initially, it wasn't felt suitable for carrier-borne operations, but that was all ironed out. the Supermarine Seafire, one of which we'll be seeing in our finale today, as the main carrier-borne fighter of the fleet air arm of the Royal Navy, and then production switched to the FB-11, the fighter-bomber version. That was the one that saw action in the Korean War in 1950-53. shot down a MiG-15 of the communist side, one of the very few piston-engined aircraft to shoot down a jet in anger, and the only British air-to-air -air kill of the 
Korean conflict. The lovely colour scheme on this aircraft represents the prototype Mark 10 Sea Fury. Hence the yellow undersides and the yellow P in a circle on the fuselage side. last pass Centaurus 18, radial engine 2,500 horsepower at this aircraft's disposal, top speed of 460 miles an hour, no wonder pilots love flying the Sea Fury, or in this case as I say the land-based version, the Fury ISS. Steve Jones into land there with the Fury. And now, as I say, make your way up to the airspace hangar if you'd like to watch the Concord nose droop while we have an intermission in the program. I'm just going to get the latest update from the flight display director and we'll come back to you very soon as well.